I feel like being a Wiccan is an old version of myself. You know, it was it was the awkward, self-conscious, early teen, pre-teen. I didn't really know. Hello everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about religion and witchcraft and it's going to be a bit of a controversial video so it's very likely I'm going to have a different opinion to you but I just thought it would be a really interesting conversation and one that I've been planning for a long time. I'm going to be merging all the three different videos into one but I am going to be making more videos on this topic and I'm going to be talking about different stuff and um there's a lot of videos I want to lead off of this one, but I just thought I'd get the conversation going with this topic because there are so many different topics I want to talk about on this channel, but this was the first video idea that I wrote in my book, my little old grimoire, but now it's my writing book, which is really funny. Okay, so we're going to be merging the two videos together, which are why I'm no longer Wiccan and am I still a Druid? Now, you might be thinking that I don't need to justify myself to you guys about my religion, and I know that, but um, I just think that it's helpful and useful to, for you guys to see and for you guys to hear about, to get a different perspective. And also, um, I know that I don't have to explain why my religion is a certain way to anyone. Like, it's my own personal thing. I just thought it'd be interesting, so. Yes, that is all the disclaimers out of the way. So, why I'm no longer Wiccan. Now, I resonated with the term, and I'm sorry it's echoey in here, we're in a, a really big echoey room in my house, and it's just like crazy, so the, the audio is a bit, oh, it's so weird talking in here actually and doing a video. Um, yes, uh, and also shout out to my nan for buying us this plant, it's really, really nice. It's my mum's plant, actually, though. But I said to her the other day, I'm definitely going to film a video in front of this plant at some point, so beware. Oh, and it also looks like it's part of my hair. Anyway, right, let's actually get into the video. So, I said I was a Wiccan for a really, really long time. Like, from the start of my craft, I just... As soon as I started being a witch, I thought, I'll be a Wiccan as well. Like, I didn't really know what the term Wiccan meant, but then when I started learning about it... Then I started to associate myself with the term and I thought, yeah, I am a Wiccan. But um, after a couple of years of being a Wiccan, I found quite limited with things because I, I don't know. I find Wicca such a difficult religion to define because it's, I don't know, I just, I still can't even give you a definition of what Wicca even is. I can say that it is a new age religion with um, influences from um, paganism, which was started by Gerald Gardner in, oh, please don't ask me the, the even the decade, I don't even know. <laughs> that is, that's not very good. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, so Wicca is this new age religion um, and people say like they celebrate the Sabbaths, they do this, they do that. And it's quite like set in the beliefs that you have to have. But when I was first le learning about it, I didn't know all the stuff about the Wiccans, apparently. I don't know. I just heard this from one source. Wiccans have to have a certain Wiccan altar. They have to have things in certain places. Like you have to have a chalice. You have to work with a matron and a patron deity and all of this sort of thing. Like you have to be really specific with some of the stuff. But then also you don't, you have freedom. And I was just confused. And also I found it difficult with the term Wiccan, with the fact that Wiccan sounds like witch. Like they're not distinguishable enough for me. In the way that they sound when you say them, like witch, Wiccan, they sound quite similar with the letters that are used. And I, I found that quite difficult. And also when I would tell someone I'm a Wiccan, they'd be like, what the hell is that? Whereas now when I say I'm a pagan, they're like, oh, you're a pagan. That makes sense. I know what one of those is. So I know that's a really bad reason to change my religion, but it's a lot easier for other people. Not that, not that anyone even needs to be involved in my religion, but it's, it's a lot easier to be a pagan for me personally, because I feel like 
I'm more free in all the practices I can do. I feel like I can relate to people more. I feel like there's a lot more pagans now than there were before in this whole witchcraft world. I don't know. I think the only sources I was looking at were like Wiccan ones because they were the only books that were in the works. But the works meaning the fabulous shop where all my money disappears to. But it's such a complicated and strange topic because I don't know. Wicca is such an interesting religion because it's so new and you have like the Wiccan read and they say if you're a Wiccan you have to believe in the Wiccan read but then other people say if you're a Wiccan you don't have to believe in the Wiccan read. So it's this strange thing and I did associate with the Wiccan read for like a certain amount of time but as I'm getting older and I'm getting more experience and learning more about life I'm taking things like that with a pinch of salt and it's not really gonna define my practice and the way I live my life every single day but I do sometimes use some of those philosophies so if you don't know the Wiccan read is and if it harms none do what you will it is actually a really long poem type thing that was published in a witchcraft newsletter or something at some point this is this information could not be true like always with my videos i say like anything i say please don't please don't take it as complete fact without doing your own research like all i'm sharing is stuff that i've learned and every source that i look at disagrees and it's so difficult so you have to make your own judgment you have to use your own critical thinking skills to know what is what so okay so let's see what i wrote this was back in the summer i said i don't think i ever truly understood what wicca meant and it took me many years to actually understand it mainly i was very young but i identify more as a pagan now mainly so non-magical folk understand <sighs> i remember um the census a couple years ago and um we were filling it out and i had to write out what my religion was and my parents were like are you seriously gonna put on there that you're a wiccan and i'm like bloody am it's my religion why would i lie and say that i'm a christian like i want to be able to represent my community you know i want to be able to i want to be i'm like really proud of my religion like i want i want to be like a I want to represent the pagan and the witches in my town. Like, why would I not do that? So, so I put on there that I was a pagan. And then when I applied for sixth form, I said that I was a Wiccan slash, wait, no. On the census, I said I was a Wiccan. Hello? Do you mind if I go back to the film here? What you want to watch me film? Do you have anything to say? No, because I'm talking about why I'm no longer a Wiccan and why I'm a pagan. What? You sure? You sure? Gosha? Gosha? Oh. <laughs> Thank you for half an hour. <laughs> that was really painful. Why did it take me so long to work out what he was saying? He literally says that all the time. It was Goujon, if you didn't hear it. He just talked about chicken Goujon just randomly. It's my brother, by the way. He came in from school, but... Why did it take me so long? And also... Just why? Just, yeah, why? You used to call me a wicker basket, didn't you? <laughs> a wicker fence. Right, that's been four minutes now. Do you want me to move the camera around onto you? I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it around. <laughs> okay, right, I'm gonna finish filming now. Why do you wanna just watch the video when it's out? You don't need to watch me filming it. Okay, so one of the things that I, I struggle with as well is the fact that with the media that I consumed and when I say media I mean like YouTube videos mainly just YouTube videos <laughs> why do you want to watch
watch me film. It's so awkward. What do you think about that? Could you just let me film or I'm going to ring mum? Oh, no, don't pick it up and put it back. You haven't even washed your hands yet. Can you pick that one back up again and put it in the fridge? You don't know which one it is, do you? It'll get washed before it's eaten. So? That's disgusting. Go and wash your hands, you dirty pig. I've got stuff to do, sorry. Don't mind me. If you can have 5,000 people watch you, you can't have one live viewer. Yeah, I don't know why, but like everything that I watched or, or read, a negative thing around Wicca. I don't know if it's because it's, it's the new age witchcraft that's being presented to the world and it's, it's making witchcraft as a thing less diverse because people just stick to what Wicca is perceived as, as like the crystals, the tarot reading. There's no one doing um, unusual types of magic when this happens. Now this is just, this is a very general, generalised statement and obviously I can't talk for the whole of witchcraft, the whole of everyone around the world practising all their different things. And also something I forgot to mention in the beginning, which I should have mentioned, is the fact that um, witchcraft is a practice. Wicca, paganism and druidry, which I'm going to talk about later, are religions. So they're two completely different things. Witchcraft as a practice, um, you can practice witchcraft and not be a pagan, a Wiccan or a druid. You don't have to be religious to do witchcraft because it is a practice. It is um, essentially you doing whatever you define witchcraft as, but for the vast majority of people, witchcraft is defined as um, doing spell work, doing magic, um, magic meaning putting your intention into something to bring about desired outcome. But magic can be so many other different things, but the main underlying thing of what it is, is intention. So putting your intention into something. The common um, example people give as like a really simple way of doing magic is, and I'm sorry you guys have to hear this again because you've probably heard it a million times, is your cup of morning coffee, you stir it with positive intention and you're trying to put all that positive energy into your coffee. You stir it clockwise because you're trying to put that positive energy into your coffee or your tea or your, your matcha or your apple juice, whatever you drink in the morning. Um, so you're, you're visualising in some people, this might be your personal practice or you might not do this, you're visualising your day going well, you're visualising everything going right for you, you're visualising um, seeing people that you like, people that you don't like staying away from you, things like that. Um, you're having positive thoughts but some people define witchcraft as different things and uh, a lot of people as they get further into their witchcraft practice they um, define it as different things and they see witchcraft in their everyday as simple things and that's something that I try to um, advocate for and um, inspire people to do in on this channel because I don't want witchcraft to be scary and unachievable for people because you see so many things on Pinterest, on social media, um, and there's usually never really anyone trying to show off and be like, wow, look at this spell that I did. I'm so cool. Give me all the compliments. Usually it's just someone going, wow, look at this ritual I did. But like for other people who feel like they haven't practiced in a long time, they're going, oh my gosh, I could never be as perfect as them. I can't afford to buy a really cool candle. Like some candles, carved candles are so expensive. So people are like, I could never achieve that. And then people just feel like not doing magic at all because they feel like anything they do isn't good enough. So yeah, that's another important thing to mention. And then religion, so paganism is its own religion. And it's also an umbrella term for other religions such as Wicca and Druidry, but there's also loads of other types of pagan religions. Some people define um, Hinduism as paganism, um, but that's like when pagan is used as like a different kind of term because some people say that if you are a pagan, you follow a nature-based religion. The next section, instead of practice, 
I should have said like your beliefs so like five different pagans what your beliefs are but this example I usually use for witches I was trying to use it on pagans but I used the wrong terms so again I was using the terms interchangeably so I'm sorry about that um I really am trying my best because I hate it when people do that as I will talk about later as I talked about earlier so yes and that nature-based religion can look differently for everyone. So if you had five pagans in front of you and you asked each of them what their practice is like, um, that would probably take a very long time because everyone's practice is very detailed and very different. Um, but everybody would have a completely different way they'd practice witchcraft. Even if you had everyone only be given the same witchcraft books in their life, they would um, all have their own flair, their own way of doing things and they'd also have different ingredients that are local to them and different things that are more significant to them in their life. So they might have this really gorgeous crystal that was given to them as a gift when they were younger and that might be something that they use in their practice a lot and someone else may have never even heard of that crystal in their life so they would never use that. Um, and with books, even with spells, people adapt the spells for themselves so like with everything I talk about here adapt anything I say to um, your own life your own practices your own beliefs so you don't have to be a witch and um, be a pagan or be a Wiccan and you can also be a pagan a Wiccan or a Druid without being a witch and without practicing witchcraft and you can also practice witchcraft without being um, religious as I said like you could be a Christian witch, you could be an atheist witch, you could be a Buddhist witch, you could be any religion or no religion at all to be a witch. It's just a practice. And in some ways, when people ask me the question about like, what's the difference between being a witch, being a pagan, being a Wiccan, being a Druid, sometimes um, I feel like really excited and really happy to talk about it. But sometimes I... What on earth was that? Sometimes when people ask me that question, either in person, online, because I used to get a, question, a lot of questions like that um, when I had a witchcraft channel when I was very, very young. Um, I used to get a lot of like beginners questions because there wasn't as many free resources online when I was a young witch, which has affected my witchcraft and paganism development personally, I believe. Um, and I want to make a whole video about the fact that I personally still feel like a beginner and I don't know how long it is going to take until I don't feel like a beginner anymore but I just I still feel like a baby witch or maybe not a baby witch like that specific term because I feel like the term baby witch came along when um, witch talk became a thing on TikTok you had like all of the new people being interested in witchcraft when um, it started to be spread more on social media, but yeah, it's a really interesting topic and something I really want to talk about because um, I want to see if any of you guys relate to it. So, yes. So yeah, the point that I didn't finish, um, this is probably completely unnecessary for the video, I probably should have cut it out, but I was just saying that sometimes it's really, really fun to explain the differences between what uh, witchcraft and paganism and wicca is and what's a religion, what isn't a religion, but sometimes it is really irritating. So I just wanted to bring that up as a topic because I think it's really interesting because like sometimes I'm like, it's so exciting, I get to talk about this, but sometimes I'm like, I have to talk about this again. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. There's still so much more to talk about. Can you close the bloody door, please? Okay, the next thing is the fact that I am um, at like kind of the maybe middle of my witchcraft journey, like the witchcraft journey I've had so far. I watched a lot of Harmony Nice. Um, I used her tarot cards, read her book, stuff like that. And she, she is a Wiccan, as far as I know. She doesn't make videos anymore, but she, she made some really, really good videos when there were not a lot of creators making videos about witchcraft, which is one of the reasons why my videos were so bad. And I just absolutely love learning about witchcraft on YouTube. I think there's just something so cool about it because you, you get to see people's lives, you get to see the way people cast spells, 
you get to uh, build a community, talk to others all in one place, which I think is really nice. Because um, when you're just reading a book, there's no comment section um, in a book, only if you like read it on Kindle or something, I think, or Wattpad. <laughs> I think it's Wattpad that has the comment section. I don't think Kindle does, because that kind of takes away from the whole reading a book vibes, because that's the whole point. You would have to go online and look at the reviews to see. Um, so yeah, and also some people disagree with what people say in a book, but I don't know why. But I agree with most of the things people say on witchcraft YouTube or witchtube if you want to call it that. I think that's really strange. Like a lot of the books that I have that I bought at the beginning of my practice, there's stuff in it, and I'm like, would not recommend that. Don't agree with that. But most of the witches I watch here, like pretty much all of them. And almost everything they say, I'm like, like, I believe in all of this, I agree. I don't know if it's because, no, it's not because they're telling me, it's just people who make videos here are just amazing. So support all the witches, everyone, or pagans. Not everyone is a witch and a pagan, but most of the creators I know are like a witch and a pagan or a witch and a Wiccan or a witch and a druid. So yeah, anyway. Yeah, so I don't follow um, many. I don't follow many Wiccans on social media anymore. Most of the witches that I follow are pagan, as far as I know, or they don't, or they're not religious, um, as far as I can tell. They just like witchcraft and stuff. Um, another thing that's really difficult when you're learning what Wicca is or trying to remember what Wicca is is the fact that there are so many books that use the word witch, Wiccan and pagan interchangeably. Why is this still an issue? Why is this still an issue? Why can't we have people that proofread books that know the difference? Because it is so frustrating to read because it's so many books. I think books published before like maybe 2020 that I have that just use it interchangeably and it's the worst thing when you look up a book and you look in the reviews and it says oh it's a great book but they use those three terms interchangeably and I'm like, I know it's fun because it's like it seems like it's a synonym like you can use um, all three words to mean the same thing like that's really good as a writer uh, because I used to write a lot um, I was thinking this morning about the fact that three years ago, right now, I was writing books and I'm not anymore because school is so mad. Um, and I'd like to write, make some videos about writing and writing fiction. And also reading, reading fiction and um, purchasing fiction. And the fact that I don't purchase fiction anymore. I only purchase witchcraft books and why I think that's better. So if I want to read fiction, I tend to borrow it from the library or I tend to already own it or I buy it second hand. So, yeah, um, I just don't know why people can't get their facts straight. Wicca and paganism, not the same thing. But Wicca is a variation of paganism in some people's opinions. A lot of the things I'm saying today could be said it's my own opinion, but it is. But some of the things that I'm saying are my own perspective and that is based off of what I've learned, as I said at the start of the video. I don't know why I have to keep, I, I, don't, I don't have to keep justifying myself. I always feel like I have to justify myself in these videos and I really don't. I really don't. Okay. Anyway, right, okay, so the next one is, I said, I'm more connected to ancient religions, ancient paganism and old traditions now. Wicca is a very new age, new religion. So, I... I don't really, I'm not really researching and learning a lot about ancient religions, ancient paganism at the moment. I am just following my curiosity, as people say. I am trying to explore different things, but create content out of it. And I've just started this big project, which I'm so excited for, but I'm waiting for the book to come in the post because... I just, oh, it's so exciting. It's like a documentary. It's so exciting. Oh my gosh. I'm not going to give too much away because it's so exciting, but oh, it's going to be incredible. It's
it's gonna be like nothing anyone has seen before on this platform and I'm so excited to share it, oh my god. But I've only made about 10 seconds worth of it so far. Um, it's gonna take a lot of editing, a lot of work, but I wanna make it really, really high quality, really, really good. So yeah, and also please let me know if there are any really good quality microphones that I can buy that are compatible with iPhone. Um, not the new iPhone, sadly. Sadly, I don't have that kind of money. Um, I have an iPhone 13 Pro, I think. Yeah, this is an iPhone 13 Pro. My main phone is an uh, iPhone XS, so that's like my everyday phone. But I use this phone for making videos, as many of you know, because I talk about it all the time, even though no one asked. So I really need a microphone for doing voiceovers, for doing the kind of product, projects that I was just talking about. So, um, yeah, I really, really need some suggestions of microphones that I can buy for it. Anyway, it's a complete tangent there. Didn't need to talk about that, but it's fine. I haven't had a lot of human interaction today, so I am a bit self-conscious, but it's okay. Yeah, so the final thing I'll say, because the other points that I've noted down here I've talked about, um, is I associate um, Wiccan with an old version of myself and I want to move on with the new and I know that's really really strange to say because labels should be able to be something that you can carry through throughout your life and um, just heads up there's going to be some Hetty Feathers spoilers in the next section like just for like 30 seconds so if you don't want Hetty Feathers spoiled which it's a kids book by the way and it's also a TV show but the TV show deviates from the original plot of the book, it's highly unlikely that anyone's going to actually get upset about me spoiling Hetty Feather when it's not even a spoiler, because you can obviously tell by looking at the book series. But anyway, um, this book series, you have Hetty, um, and that is the name that she's given at birth when she, it's based in the Victorian period, it's the name that she's given at birth because um, her mum has to give her to this Founding hospital because she can't look after her anymore. So her name becomes Hetty Feather. She hates it. She grows up with that being her name. But then um, when she comes to leave the Founding Hospital, she decides to change her name to Sapphire Battersea because she learns stuff about her identity. So she changes her original label from being Hetty Feather. She becomes a new version of herself with a new label. And she wouldn't be the same person if she kept onto that old label of her being um, Hetty Feather. Because um, in order for her to move on and to be this new version of herself, she has to kind of evolve into being Sapphire Battersea. So then um, in the third book, she then becomes Emerald Star. And these are like the names of the books. And this is when she is um, working as like a performer. She's like pretending to be a mermaid and stuff like that, which I've done before, would not recommend it. Oh my God, that's a whole nother video. Hello everyone and welcome to the first video on my new channel. So I'm going to be doing the mermaid spell today. This isn't my spell. Um, so, yeah. Um, so each time she picks up a new label and I feel like this with my my religion and the label that I put on my religion because I feel like being a Wiccan is an old version of myself. You know, it was it was the awkward, self-conscious, early teen, pre-teen. I didn't really know, I, I did know who I was. I've known who I am for a long time, like my interests and stuff. I've always been very grown up for my age, as people just tell me, but I, I don't know, I just I just feel like I need to move on. I need to move on from being called a Wiccan and be a pagan because it just feels more right, you know? I just like that term a lot more. And it's like with saying that you are a witch. Some people don't associate with the term witch. Some people don't like it because it's got uh, negative connotations. Um, it might be due to historical reasons you don't want to be called a witch. Um, so you might choose to be called something else. You can be called whatever you want to define your magical practice or nothing at all. So it's interesting. Okay, next part of this video, we're going to be talking about Druidry. Now, um, quick summary of my Druidry journey for anyone who does not know, but there is a mini series of it 
on my channel called the Druidry Diaries. So I discovered Druidry properly. Like I've always known about Druidry. Like, I've heard that term, but I was like, I don't know what that is. Um, and I'll, there's more details about me discovering Druidry, my initial thoughts about it in this video series. So I highly recommend you watch it after watching this video. So in that video, um, in that series is basically me learning about Druidry, seeing how I relate to it, how I resonate with it. Um, and I initially thought it was going to be my new religion. Um, I thought maybe I'll end up being like a Wiccan and a Druid or a Pagan and a Druid, or maybe I'll just be a Druid completely. But I have, um, like, I haven't done, well, that's an absolutely stupid thing to do, to say, I haven't done enough Druidry research. What a joke. Um, uh, the thing is, <laughs> so the reason for me researching Druidry so heavily in the beginning was I was interested in Druidry as a topic um, and I probably would have researched it anyway, but I, I really cannot imagine um, another way I would have researched Druidry because of how I had to research it. So basically, what I uh, did was I had to do a project for school. So alongside my three A-levels in my first year of doing A-levels in year 12, um, I had to do, well, I decided to, I didn't have to do it. A lot of people dropped out. Um, I had to do a research project. I had to write 5,000 words on a topic of my choice. It could be any topic. Um, so you had to research it, you had to present your findings, you could do the essay or you could do an artifact so you could do a performance and then write a 1000 word essay about it or you could um, host a party or you could do a sponsored run or you could compose a piece of music and then explain why you did every note, how you did it, why you use that time signature, why you use that instrument um, and incorporate all the research that you have done. Um, and it was supposed to be like you spend 30 hours on it or something. Definitely spent more time on it than that. But um, overall, it was, it did kind of slowly destroy me by the end of it. Um, because sadly, I wasn't, um, I wasn't used to doing something so independently, using skills that you would learn at university. So in some ways, I'm glad that I had those skills and I learned them whilst doing the EPQ um, because my best friend has just started university and um, she said that the transition to degree has been harder because she's not used to doing things like referencing um, research in that kind of way whereas when I hopefully go to university in September slash October um, I will I'll already know those skills and I'll be able to do it um, and so yeah it was a very interesting way to look into a subject like that because a lot of people you wouldn't you wouldn't have that as, as a way that you are researching about a magical topic like you wouldn't be writing an essay about that that's it's quite an unusual thing um, so yeah I started doing loads of research um, and I decided on my topic to be um, the link between sustainability and Druidry. So I wanted to argue the fact that if you adopted a more Druidic mindset, you had more values of Druids, Pagans, but I wanted to centre it more around Druidry because it gave me a new thing to research and also it was rooted in the history of England. It was linked to Celtic Paganism and Celts and the way that people used to live. Um, I wanted to learn about a new magical topic and also make it academic, make it something that I had to do for school to help me stay connected to my religion whilst I was doing a lot of schoolwork and a lot of revision. And yeah, I don't regret, I don't regret it, but when I was doing it, I did regret it. It was awful. There was nights that I was literally up at 3 a.m. writing it because I couldn't sleep because I was so stressed about it. But anyway, I'm going to do a whole video about um, my EPQ. Um, I'm going to be doing videos about the EPQ in general and my advice because I got an A star, which is great. That was, that's the top grade you can get. Um, but 
there's lots of good videos online about DDPQ, but I've learned a lot of things that people don't talk about. And even simple stuff like how to format it, how to research it, um, and stuff like that. But yeah, so Druidry, I know a lot about it, but also I feel like I don't know a lot about it. Something that would have been really nice would be to get practical experience of Druidry, like meeting people, interviewing people. But all I really had to go off was one book that I bought because I couldn't really, well, I could have afforded actually, I had a job then. <laughs> I didn't want to buy loads of books to research it because I only had a certain amount of time to read it, to research it, to look over it. And even now I haven't fully finished that book because I wasn't a big fan of it. But if you want a notebook, it is and me, oh, I need a drink. If you want a notebook, it is and see me talk about it more, then definitely check out those videos. But anyway, so Druidry, because I had to look at it in such an academic way for a very long time and I consumed a lot of stuff about it and learned about it a lot, it kind of ruined the excitement for me. Originally it was great, like I was really enjoying it. I was like, this is a perfect thing to write uh, an essay about it. Everyone that I told about it, because people would go, oh, what are you doing your EPQ on? And I'd tell them and they'd be like, that's absolutely fascinating. Like that was really interesting. Well, they didn't say absolutely fascinating, but I thought it was absolutely fascinating. They're like, wow, that's really cool. Like that's really interesting. Um, my teachers thought it was a good idea. And yeah, it was really, really fun. But because I did it for so, so long, because it became chore in the end when I was doing the essay, I am not as into Druidry anymore, which is really sad. So I'm giving myself a break from Druidry and once I've gotten through all of the bloody books I keep buying, I will buy some more on Druidry because there's some really cool ones I've, I've um, saved to my Amazon shopping list and also if you guys have any recommendations for Druidry books because I've seen some people in my comment section say that they are Druids, please let me know in the comments any um, books would be good like any like intermediate druidry books would be really cool because a lot of my books are beginner books and i absolutely hate beginner books because that's one of the reasons i feel like a baby witch so yeah um let's see if there's anything i have missed sorry about the tangents the tangents are a bit crazy to be honest they're a bit unnecessary i'm gonna probably edit out a lot of them okay Oh yeah, that's an important point. I feel like I can't authentically be a druid without becoming part of the order of bards, ovates and druids. So if you don't know, there's this organisation in the UK called OBOD, Order of Bards, Ovates and Druids, and um, it is run by druids. You can learn about druidry through it. And a lot of people who are druids tend to join it, but it does cost to join and it does cost to do kind of like courses to become a proper druid, to become like a bard, an ovate or a druid. It takes two years roughly to do each, um, oh, I've forgotten all my druidry lingo, each, um, what are they called? The different levels of druidry, are, there's a proper term, I've forgotten what it is, but it takes two years to be a bard, then an ovate, then a druid. So a bard is kind of like um, someone who learns to express themselves through poetry. This is just what I remember. This could be completely wrong. But from what I read, I remember it as um, a bard is someone who expresses their love for nature in books, in poems, in um, songs and stuff like that. Um, and then an ove is a healer. Um, and then a druid is like someone who's collected all the wisdom over the years um, and they are now teaching it to um, druids who are now training like younger druids, bards and ovates, helping everybody um, and in order to do this training properly you um, it is ideal to sign up to the order of bards, ovates and druids and start their kind of like course, I don't know if they call it a course but it's kind of like a course where it's about £20 a month and they send you a pack of little booklets and activities to complete. And I just thought, mm, that's a good idea, I might do one day, but it's not a necessity for right now because I feel like I'm making some kind of progress in my, my magical journey, so I don't really need to do that as much. But then I was also like, it might be a really good idea, but I was like, 
I want to buy a witch box instead so I signed up for witch box and had that every month and I amalgamated a lot of spell kits that I still need to do I was going through some of them last night and I was like oh I need to do this spell because I've saved a lot of them up because they don't apply to my life yet so I want to keep them um what else did I say should have made this into two videos Okay, um, I only have one book on the subject of Druidry and it's very strict with the way you have to be with your practice or it seems like that, it comes across that way and a lot of people have um, said this on the reviews. They said it's very nun-like, so it was something that I had to discuss in the extra stuff around my research and my 5,000 word essay. Um, was the fact that it seemed quite biased in the way it was talking um, with that sort of thing. Also, another really interesting thing to note, and this is the final thing I'm gonna say about my EPQ, because I really wanna make a really fun video about it. So, um, I structured it in like the coolest way. I decided this is gonna be the structure when I started to like properly write it, but it was also really difficult because I had to s split it up in a very, equal way I could only have a certain amount of words for each thing um so I decided to structure it as the wheel of the year and I thought this was so cool when I was doing it but it really did cause a lot of issues so um it started with like in bulk and saying why celebrating in bulk can help you feel more connected to the earth and want to do things to help save it and then I moved on to all the other um sabbats why am I forgetting the word sabbat god knows I say it about 50 times a day um, and then I concluded with the fact that if we start to learn more about Druidry, um, then we can implement the practices of ancient Druids. We can grow our own food because we want to feel more connected to the food that we eat, um, blah, 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 blah. And then people will be more sustainable. People will not want to chop down trees. People will stop going on their phones and buying a load of rubbish from Amazon. So, yeah, I really, really liked that kind of thing, but I really, really should have done it about more science, because I did talk about science in it, but anyway, my brain is starting to be frazzled a bit, because I've been talking for a long time. Oh yeah, uh, the Druidry, I really like that it's quite like rooted in Britishness, because I really like uh, British stuff, because I feel like this is a very controversial thing yet again. I feel like um, I feel like um, I'm gonna cut this bit out and cut out the rest of the video. But basically, I went on to talk about, and I don't really like the words I chose, the way that I said it. I don't know, but I, I was just talking about how um, a lot of British people find, like that I've spoken to or I had people talk about, don't have as much as like a culture with being British. Like they don't have cultural dress. There is British cultural dress, but it's not as common. Um, there's like not a lot of cultural dishes except from I guess like a roast dinner, Yorkshire puddings and other stuff like that. But like compared to other countries, I don't feel like there's a lot of um, culture in this in this country. So um, like typical culture like other countries have, as I said. So that's just what I was talking about and I talked about it for a long time, but... Um, I wanted to completely leave that bit out, but I just want to mention what I talked about because I don't want people to think I said anything bad that I wanted to cut out. And I wanted to keep it authentic and keep in the old outro, the the um, the original ending of this video. But yeah, this video has been, I, I'm going to just end it here and do my own, me a couple hours later, doing my own outro. But this video has been very rambly. Um... Obviously, it's not a guide, even though maybe this video looks presented as it is a guide of how you choose which religion you want to be. And maybe I'll make a video like that in the future. But for right now, I just thought it'd be a fun idea to do this podcast style type video. So I hope you've been able to watch it in the background of doing chores, cooking or whatever. Um, but yeah, I just thought it'd be interesting to talk about my journey with religions, choosing religions within witchcraft ones that complement your practice and stuff like that and just just have a little discussion so I shared a lot of personal stories and stuff so I hope that that was interesting for you guys to listen to um obviously there's gonna be loads more videos like this so 
stay tuned. Um, and yeah, like the video if you enjoyed it, that would really help me out. Um, and yeah, with this video, I'd love to start out a discussion on this topic. So please let me know any of your thoughts in the comments. As I said, it's completely fine if you disagree with anything I said in this video. Or you disagree with everything that I said in this video. Uh, as I said, it's all based off of my own personal knowledge and experience. Um, so everyone's going to have different views on the topic. But um, I just I love hearing other people's opinions of stuff like this. So I thought that you guys might like to hear mine. Um, and I like making videos like this because it helps me to look back on. Like I find it really interesting. Um, I need I need to remake it actually. My about me video. That was the first video on this channel when I turned it into a witchcraft channel because fun fact this channel actually used to be a gaming channel yeah I didn't make many videos of that though uh I just thought it'd be a funny idea and um it never turned into anything it turned in into this instead which is great but this is my third main channel that I've ever had uh so yeah anyway I just thought it'd be a fun idea um I'd love to open a discussion as I said in the comments let me know your thoughts love to have a chat with you guys see what you think i'd love to hear what religion you follow was it even a religion that i didn't mention in this video um that'd be really interesting to hear um and yeah i hope i didn't offend anyone with this video obviously that was not my intention at all um so i'm sorry if anyone got offended but like i did did try my best not to offend anyone um first yeah and as I said, if you disagree with what I say, it's fine. Like, don't even feel bad about it. Um, or, um, yeah. So that's the end of the video. Extremely long video. Probably not as long as my essential oils video. That's the record. Um, be interesting if I can beat that one day. I think the only way I would beat that is if I was doing a podcast or if I, I, if I was releasing a video that, um, I had made, like it was a film. I did loads of editing for it and I compiled loads of stuff together in it so yeah very interesting anyway I'm gonna actually go now um yeah hope this video is good subscribe if you haven't already if you're new and if you're new let me know in the com let me know in the comments please say hello um so yeah and I'll see you guys all soon for a new video bye